Well, I tell you what. We've got Tesco V on the line from the Meat Man. Let's not make him wait because he's on the East Coast somewhere and it's later there. So let's bring him up right now. Tesco, are you there? I'm here. And no. Well, Sister Tracy's with me. Hey, Tesco. Thanks for calling, man. Yeah, sure. Good to chat with you guys. Where are you calling from again? I am in Michigan. Okay, so you're the East Coast time, not not Central. That's right. So are you in Kalamazoo, or where are you at in Michigan? No, I'm near Lansing. Lansing, okay. Yeah, I ended up back. I, I spent like 17 years on the East Coast and deep, near D.C. and Northern Virginia, and then in 99 we moved back. So we've been here almost 20 years again. Okay, so yeah, no, I knew that your history had a lot to do with uh, Michigan roots. Yep. We're from Illinois originally, so not ah, okay. not a, a a far stretch between the two. Yeah, and you guys are where? Uh, we're in Oregon, Southern Oregon, right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're way out here on the West Coast. Cool. Yeah, so uh, you got a lot of fans out here. Yeah, man, we always do well when, uh, when we play out there. Yeah, I, I the only time I ever got to see the Meat Man or you know you was always like in the Midwest, and the last time in particular was in Pekin, Illinois, when we you played with the Pissed Midgets, and rest oh, in yeah. and rest in peace <laughs> to Mikey Null, the singer for that band, but he orchestrated that whole thing. Yeah, that was that was so that was kind of a weird show, just a random <laughs> weird town. It was like a yeah. lot of the people were there were just you know there because it was. A night at the bar, and those kind of shows <laughs> are always world collide because they're like Pekin. The Pekin is a very randomly weird town in and of itself. Yeah. So the yeah, it's this weird band on stage, but you know it's the only game in town, so you got that in your favor. Well, can you imagine walking in and not knowing that the Meat Man or like Tesco V was going to perform, and you, there you are? It's like what the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You're expecting like some kind of like honky tonk band or something. It's a real redneck sort of town anyway, so it was funny, man. <laughs> Yeah, it seemed pretty, uh, pretty WT, as they say. But it's actually we looked we'll it up. To cast judgment. Well, I know, but it's actually on the internet, like is voted most, like second most racist city in like the country. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> too bad you didn't know that yeah. at the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Could have turned into something completely different. Right. <laughs> People think you know because of my bombast that I'm. Some kind of a right wing, you know. They don't. The people that don't get it don't understand that I'm, I'm a really let, live and let live kind of guy. So I mean, I don't want to burst any misconceptions or preconceptions or stereotypes, but I'm quite different than my on stage persona. Let's just say that. Yeah, a lot of people like to project a lot of stuff on you, don't they? <laughs> they do. They do, and take me literally, and that's part of the reason why I, I ceased performing in 2015. Is it's just like the world can't handle Tesco V and the Meat Men anymore. Can't That's... handle the truth. <laughs> no. No, it's interesting because I've seen your, you know, your band from the, you know, early, early 80s all the way through now. Like your whole thing. I've been a fan and follow what you do and what you stand for and, and the shtick of it all as well as the what's real, what's not. And it's funny because our world has really changed so crazily that you're right, man. It's so PC and, and strange that. Doing what you did before, which was accepted as fun, and even if it wasn't accepted, people weren't trying to probably kill you over it. Well, but it's tolerated, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Today, I don't know, right. man. I'd be afraid, probably. Yeah. You could say you could say outrageous things, and you know, with your tongue firmly planted in your cheek, and nobody would think twice about it. But now it's just like it's just weird out there. So, had, did you have, suffer any kind of weird negative repercussions from just doing what you do in order to come to this conclusion, or was it just a slow realization? Yeah, it's just it, part of my frustration was not ever, ever able to, you know, being able to get on bigger tours and festivals and stuff, and just club show headlining clubs is fun and everything, but it's limiting. It's kind of like you feel like you're kind of going through the motions, doing the same thing all the time, and. I always would get try to get my agents to get me on other other tours and and uh, you know I'm, I've always just done it as a hobby. I'm not like you know trying to make a living off it. So it's like it's I, it's like a toy I can pick up and put down. Yeah. And when it isn't fun, then I walk away. And I've walked away ma many times over the last almost forty years. That next year it'll be forty years since we have started doing it. So you know, off and on. The last one was actually the longest. I did seven. Straight years, 
um, from 2008 to 2015. And that's the longest I've ever done it without a break. Well, you know, when it stops being fun or when it stops uh, being, you know, personally gratifying or right. whatever, then, yep. hey, it's, it's time to uh, step away and kind of reevaluate yeah. and, uh, you know, wait for society to catch up with you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? And I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to sound like I'm uh, bitter and, you know, that kind of thing. Because I've, I've had, I mean, over the years, I've been blessed that the 80s and 90s were heady times for or me and the band and you know we we considering we were just kind of goofing around we we did okay sold some records and we continue to sell records and then you have our fans out there and I'm I'm uh, feel fortunate for that well you know and I know through the years you've been associated and maybe I guess or possibly have had friendships with some people that are definitely bigger and you know like guys like Danzig when's the last time you talked to Glenn Danzig the last time I talked to Danzig was 1985 at a what? Samhain concert in Baltimore, and he pretty much blew me off, and that was the end of our friendship right there. So it's been a long time. I, I'm quite sure that you're not the only one with that exact same scenario. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, he's not exactly known for being the most uh, gregarious, shall we say, <laughs> friendly guy. You're being so kind. <laughs> <laughs> he's, no, he, he's no Jerry only in the friendliness department. I'll just say that. Yeah, Glenn. If we're just speaking about him for a minute, I don't really know many people that have had many good stories about Glenn. I've I've asked like a hundred people about Danzig, and they always generally have something horrible. <laughs> it's so weird, man. <laughs> right. Well, he just he just sort of made drew a line in the sand, and it was he was going to be a rock star, and by golly, all, all of his old friends were uh, he, he, Kenny not from. Violent Apathy and Kalamazoo told me a story. He used to book Sam Hain and he did a was doing a van tour and it was in one night after the show and Danzig was getting ready to slide the van door shut. He goes, Kenny, this is the last punk rock tour. Next stop, Metallica. And he slammed the door. Wow. <laughs> rode off into the night. So that was, not only was that a stupid thing to say, but well, I mean, you get you understand what he was, yeah, where he was coming oh, from. But it yeah. was a really jive turkey thing for him to say. Wow, sounds yeah. like something he would say, though. Again, yeah. you know, <laughs> totally, it does. <laughs> That's funny, man. So, are you officially not? Re are, we, are you doing gigs here and there? Or are you just pretty much done, man? Well, I don't want to say I'm done, done, because then if I come back and you know, yeah, do a farewell tour, or do <laughs> right, a farewell show, then I look like a schmuck. So, so you just. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to use the the H word, hiatus. There you go. And, uh, you know, it can be an indefinite hiatus. And, and who knows what, what what's in the cards. But all I know is right now I'm having a good time just promoting toy shows and doing my thing and, and hanging out in uh, this wonderful state of Michigan and loving life. Right. Now, is that kind of what you're spending your time doing is, you know, show promotion and, and that sort of yeah. thing? Cool. Yeah, we do. We, we've got two shows going now. Uh, one called the Rock and Roll Toy Show, which is down in Detroit. It was coming up in two weeks on the 23rd. And then I started doing a show in Lansing. Finally, after being here forever, I was like, this like, this one horse town needs a toy show. And I did one six months ago, and it was just like, I do free admission. And it was just, we had like a couple thousand people come through. And I've doubled the show, doubled the size of the show. So, you know, I'm. And could you tell us a little bit about the show? What is it exactly? What is like, the toy so show? It's, well, the, the show here in town is called the, the Lansing Collectible Toy Comic and Record Show. We're doing oh. it November 11th. But it's, it's I try to cover all the, the bases. And uh, but vintage toys is really my thing, but I'm into records, too. Oh, cool. And, right. right. Uh, yeah, so we get, you know, records. As, as they say, vinyl is back. I know it's the, the most hack thing ever. Vinyl never left. We all, right. all of us <laughs> loved it. Have been collecting it nonstop. But suddenly, there's every, the inter, everyone else's interest has peaked. So they're going through the coats of records, much as we have done over the years. And uh, it's it's great though. It's it's kind of a you know bring them bring everybody together. And Lansing is right smack dab in the middle of the state. And uh, it's uh, so we get people from Detroit, Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, all over the place. That's so, funny because I actually bought a Wendy O. Williams bobblehead doll from you one time. <laughs> oh yeah. And I wondered why why is he selling these bobbleheads? Now I get it. Okay. 
<laughs> so yeah, well, I'm buddies with Clint Weiler, who runs Agronautics, who who does those bobbleheads. Nice. Yeah, I, yeah, I was so, I was I was pals with Wendy when she was alive, so I was really happy to see that she made it to uh, you know her own bobblehead man. <laughs> yeah, her turned out good. I was, he, I'm sorry I never got the chance to meet her. She was she was wonderful. She was a great human yeah. being, man. We're actually playing yeah. some Wendy O on the show tonight a little bit later. So cool. Yeah. Solo material. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are awesome. you are you pals with Wes Beach, who's also a, a resident of uh, Michigan, and he Who? was a guitar player for Wendy West Beach. No, I didn't know he lived in Michigan. Yeah, I forget what part. Uh, he and I co-wrote a song together once, and uh, but I forget what city he lives in. But yeah, he's there somewhere too. Wow, cool. Yeah. Um, what else was I going to ask you? Would you? What do you? What's your opinion of the virtual ABBA thing that either happened or was going to happen with the virtual ABBA concert? I think it's pretty pretty cool. Um, I mean, they a few years ago they turned on a billion dollars from Richard Branson. So God, I thought it, can you believe it that? Ever. And I and I always heard that it was because Agnetto gets like so many weirdo stalkers and people like me that <laughs> try to you know get in touch with her and stuff. And she didn't want to go out in public, but I don't know something changed. Maybe they realized the clock's ticking and they need to get together and and uh, dude. Who Do turns who turns down a billion well, dollars? I'm really curious what this new song is going to sound like. <laughs> yeah, me too. And who turns down a billion dollars? That's just weird. I know. I mean, <laughs> everyone's got their price, you know. They say, uh, and I would think a billion right. dollars would would pretty much cover it, just about <laughs> yeah, anybody's I price. <laughs> I know. It's like really. I mean, with all of the, uh, you, you got all sorts of uh, vocal assistant uh, capabilities and the you know technology. If your the pipes aren't what they used to be. Right. <laughs> and we all know how that goes. Uh, you can get a little help from uh, in the digital uh, world. So, yeah, they could. People wouldn't care, you know, if their voices were great. People go out and watch Wayne Newton and his voice. His voice has been blown out for 10 years. So For crying out loud. Yeah. Like Steven Tyler. I mean, even the big, you know, uh, arena yeah. rock bands. Steven doesn't yeah, sound anything like he Tom, used to. Tom and people. His, his, his voice is gone. And, but I. People still pay to see him, you know. They do. Um, what does Tesco V have on his turntable right now? What What do you listen to? Like, um, do you have a pretty? I'm assuming you have a pretty broad um, musical taste, but are you listening really to? Really broad. I mean, I, I'm still I'm still stuck in the stuff that I from everything from the stuff that the stuff that I used to smoke pot to back in the days, you know, Jade Warrior and all that kind of stuff, and all the way up to. You know, uh, obsessed and doom stuff, and and uh, I'm I love all these compilations that have come out in the last few years. So what like stuff? Las Vegas grind and all those compilations of all the cheesy, uh, you know, smoke filled script club compilations, and just just Norton puts out stuff, and and uh, just uh, all the, I love that kind of. When I was on tour, um, I would always. You know, we, that's one thing that never changes. The first thing you do is grab something to eat and find the go to shop at as many record stores as you can before you have to do sound checks. So I got a lot of stuff, and sometimes you get the the band discount, which is even better. Nice. <laughs> so what stuff are you smoking pot to these days? <laughs> well, actually, uh, I mean it's just all over the place. It doesn't. Uh, I'm, I don't know. I mean. I don't have any cool, like, I mean, you guys, the bands that you guys just listened to before I came on, I, I hadn't heard of any of it. So I'm not going to profess to be, like, on the pulse beat of the, you know, I still listen, pull out my old punk 45s, and I'm just, just like, kind of stuck in the, stuck in a rut. Well, we've got, stuck you know. The stuff that I like. We've, we've probably got a lot of stuff coming up that you like, too, though. We, we try to mix it up, you know. Um, what do you think are some of the most overrated punk bands? Do you, any, anything come off the top of your head of as far as overrated punk bands of all time? Well, um, I really hate a lot of that stuff out of California, like No Effects and Bouncing Souls and all that. <laughs> so crap. do I. So do I. And it's, <laughs> I hate that, all that thing songy. And, and, and since I don't really care about making friends anymore, like, Bands like The Descendants, I mean, I, I really don't get it. Milo goes why to college. They, why they get so much money per show. I don't either, dude. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I don't. That's good, I'm glad we agree on that. But I mean, I just, that, that whole, I mean, but then, then the, the California stuff from 
the late seventies is I mean Like the Dick the Dickies is awesome, that, you know. The Dickies, the Weirdos. Yeah. All the all the bands, even you know, the bands from San Francisco, all the West Coast stuff. The wipers. Yeah, the wipers were awesome, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> that stuff uh, is uh I still listen to them. I bought all we went to Jackpot and I bought all because I had sold my original ones. I know that's shameful. And then I, fortunately, Jackpot had repopped all the Wipers albums, so I got them all back. Well, that's good. <laughs> I got to ask you something political just because I have to. But what is your, off the top of your head, what is your answer to this question? What is your opinion of Donald Trump? Well, I'm not allowed to curse. So I can't <laughs> call him what I call him. Well, let's just say I call him an F bag. I, I mean, I, I don't, I, 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 there really are no words. <laughs> there aren't any to words. The, but to describe the depth of my loathing of that subhuman cretin, <laughs> uh, I, I believe he's possibly the worst human being ever to walk the planet. <laughs> you know, I, I believe, I, I just think he is completely lacking and he has no moral compass none he has no soul I don't none think he has a soul he was raised wrong his parents did not instill in him any virtuous um he seems like a sociopath nothing. yeah sociopath yeah a truly a sociopath we are truly our country's in a free fall right now well not it's to uh get too down in the dumps here it's kind of like though <clears throat> realistically um it, it's kind of like the guy stepped out from finally stepped out from behind the curtain <laughs> you know we always knew how ugly it was behind the scenes right. and now it's like the monster has finally come around from behind the curtain <laughs> and went blah, 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 here i am you know what i mean like and right. uh, yeah so uh, my hope is that you know by sinking to this ultimate low that we will finally have no direction to go but up. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah. So, Hopefully you know, where do you that. go from rock bottom? <laughs> yeah. We, um, we, you know, but we, we, what do we lose during this, you know, during this free fall? What do we... The interim. Can yeah. we just write the ship and say, okay, that was a, the last four years were... Let's just forget about that and start over. I don't know if it's that easy. I, I don't mean, either. There's been, some permanent, there's been some permanent damage done to our country, but do I believe in, you know, am I optimistic? Of course. You got to be, man, you know? You got to be. You have to be. Otherwise, you know, just cash it all in like so many people seem to be doing these days. I just, exactly. want, just had to ask your opinion. I just had to ask. Well, yeah, I hope I... Gave it to you, the Reader's Digest version. Yeah, you did. You, and talk you, all night. You <laughs> gave the answer we wanted. <laughs> I, no, I, I, I really didn't want an answer. I was just simply, I did. <laughs> simply curious to his answer to that because, you know, it's Tesco. <laughs> Every morning I hear my, i laying in bed and I hear my wife in the den just cursing at the TV. And <laughs> I know exactly what she's watching CNN. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredulous that it's allowed to go on. No, it's like, it's like uh, Groundhog Day, or like being in a bad dream that you can't wake up from. Yeah, <laughs> like a Twilight Zone. Over and over. Kind of like over. yeah, you know, you know, like when you're it right in riding in the car and and you you're like in this sort of a sleep and you're sleeping, but you, you your neck's really stiff and you want to wake up, but you can't. Yeah, it's yeah, like that. Yeah. Well, politically <laughs> speaking, yeah. Anyway, there's my crappy analogy late at night. I always ask a, a song or a, a question every time we interview someone. I know that you um, at one point had been an elementary school teacher, so yep. I don't know that might be your answer. But if Tesco V hadn't went into the music business, if you hadn't been um, in this industry, or let's just go ahead and say if you hadn't been in this industry or if you hadn't been a school teacher, what would Tesco V be doing? What would you be interested in doing? What what career path do you think you would have taken if you hadn't went down either of those? I, I, what I would, because I've never been fulfilled, like, uh, as far as my jobs go. I've always, I've got been, I, I'm, I'm well paid. I'm in IT. I hate it. But 
I think I would have been really good, like, in marketing. Like, um, I think I would have been really good, like, a comedy writer on a uh, TV series. There you go. I think I could have been good at, like, uh, writing for a major publication, uh, whether it be the Village Voice or the New York Times or whatever, because mm. writing is my forte. It's never too late. I it, but, so I definitely, that as that that aspect of my life, if I had to do it all over again, I would have taken a different career path. But my pops is forced, you know, kind of like, you know, really wanted me to be a teacher. And I thought, oh, well, you got to do something. So I got my degree. Hey, it's then, an admirable profession. You know, it really is. Yeah. I'd substitute taught, you know. Um, but when I moved back here, I was really intent to stop doing the IT and go back and work on my master's at Michigan State. And I started to work in the school system. And it's just like, it has passed me by. The kids are, a lot of them are on meds and things have changed. And, yeah, and it just, I was. It did, I didn't feel it anymore. I didn't feel that nurturing spirit anymore. So then, my couple doors down, the guy worked at the hospital here in town. He goes, "Yeah, we're hiring in, in IT." So that was 2000, and here I am. I'm still at it. 63. Years Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm well, an old man. Well, you're you're still there, man. Youthful youth never goes away. Music keeps us young, man. And we appreciate you joining us on the show tonight, man. I know it's like you're fourth appearance or third or fourth on the show absolutely we thank you so much for calling in we're getting ready to uh to spin a track here uh yeah some um, meat men the meat men yeah i think we're gonna play uh what are we playing i want to play i want drugs <laughs> <laughs> cool. from, from the pope on a rope album yeah it's an album that was ahead of its time yeah it's a great record and i yeah thanks again tesco and i'm hoping we can talk to you down the road again on the show as we are fans and uh, Absolutely. if you do, you know, get back out there, let us know. We'd love to have you out in Oregon. We so. please, yeah, we definitely would. Sounds great. Thanks, guys. Yeah, for sure. Best of luck, Tesco V, and uh, many blessings, my friend. All right. You guys have a good one. Yeah. Thanks so much, Thank man. Thank you. All right, bye.